I'm Sir Tap Tap, and let's play Forward to the Sky. A uh, review copy of this will be provided to me free of charge by the developer. Um, this is the first game from a new Taiwanese developer called um, Animu Games. Not kidding. Uh, they're a brand new anime inspired developer, and this is their first game. And I've already finished it. I really like it. Um, Controller support, not exactly perfect. For some reason I can't select this first thing here, but the basic story is that there's this evil witch and she stole all these crystals and she went to the Sky Tower. So our heroine here is gonna go find her and beat her up because, you know, witches are evil. And there's these crystals you gotta collect to reveal the story. We're just gonna go ahead and collect all of the crystals the first time because there's really no reason not to. One important thing to note. Destructible environments! They don't serve too much purpose gameplay-wise, but they're very, very fun to beat up, so I'm very glad they were included. Um, regarding what I said about controller issues, I did... I had this weird issue where the camera just was all weird and I think that was just my PC being you know a PC and having issues for the most part my only problem with the controller controls yeah my main problem with the controller controls is that movement is eight way um, it's really mainly designed, I guess, for mouse and keyboard. Works perfectly fine for those, but movement's eight-way, and it's digital, not, you know, no analog, like no walking when it's moved slowly. But it works perfectly fine. Where's the witch hiding? Are there clues inside the crystal? <laughs> this way, I'll be the hero who defeats the witch. Who would dare call me a troublemaking princess? <laughs> Wow! The story is pretty light. It's like a storybook sort of thing. It does its job well enough. Um, very subtle little hint on these boxes here. If you look very closely, you can actually see there are hands on the boxes. Uh, one little oddity, the dialogue boxes do not turn entirely, like they don't entirely disappear. So you can see the words of this box on her face there. It's like the dialogue goes to like opacity one instead of opacity zero. Not a big deal, just something I noticed there. So there are physics and th these are occasionally quite relevant in puzzles. It's Parker. It's kind of a puzzle, like, it's a bit more focused on puzzles than combat or platforming, but it has a little bit of all three. Parker. Parker. You have quite a bit of health, so taking damage usually isn't too big of a deal until later levels. My biggest problem with combat is that Triangle has this l lunge attack that looks really fun, but because of the 8-way movement, I guess, it's really fiddly and hard to aim right. See, I got it perfect there, but I usually don't. Shadows are actually pretty good in this game. They're all real-time. They're a little bit fuzzy if we... Look up, I guess I don't have shadows on my face. Yeah, the edges are a little fuzzy and pixely, but uh, they're all real-time shadows, and it's all pretty cool stuff. I never get tired of beating up the environment. Ouch. Yeah, that's wasn't exactly graceful, but whatever. Ow. Oh, 
another one is so embarrassing. There'll be lots of wows. Each enemy type has this bigger variant that has like a crazy amount of health, so I usually just mop up all the weaker ones first. You have to defeat all the enemies to get all the crystals. The game's pretty short, I'll probably just show a couple levels here. It's six levels long. You can expect it to make maybe uh, somewhere between two or four hour, two to four hours I guess. Probably more like three. Um, I didn't really time myself. Hard to use that one. Oh, and there's also a back step that is pretty useful in combat, but you can accidentally jump off ledges with it pretty easy because you go quite a ways back. So we've got all the crystals, so we want to go in here, continue the story. So you unlock one third of the story with each 33 crystals, but just get all of them the first way through. Oh, and if you fall off, you just come back in your little balloon there. Not actually sure what happens when you die. So enemies can trigger switches, so just want to kill these guys. That one looks good. A little lower. That looks good. I like the little mechanical thingies on the walls coming down. So every time you, like every new level... Every new level has a few new mechanics and uh, of course new puzzles based on those. So the progression is actually really nice. It starts off quite basic and then you can start getting introduced to some of the platforming puzzles in this level. And then each level is pretty new. Um, I hate these big guys, they take a lot of damage. 
The real trick to dealing with those sword guys is wait till they charge and then hit them after they've charged, but uh, I wasn't doing that very well. So we just need to not take any damage for the rest of the level. We'll be fine, pro probably. Parker, you're slightly in the way. I really like how there's always more tower above you. It looks really nice. Though it's got that gamey, video gamey fog. Parker! Come on! Also, I like that there's no tutorials or anything. Uh, there's... Come on, block. There you go. There's little hints, like you saw that block pressing down the switch just caused it to constantly move. The game will, a few times it'll show you tricks you can do like that. Seriously, get down. And, uh... Oh, and that little glow there, that indicates one of those statues you need to break. There are three of those in every level, and it's pretty easy to find them. Well, it's pretty easy to locate where they are on the map because of the little sparkle, but there's pretty much always a little trick to getting to them. So I won't demonstrate since I'm about to die, but it looks like maybe you might be able to jump over those. I'm pretty sure you can't. I tried a few times doesn't end well. So what we're going to do... Wait. Oh, we're stuck. So... Let's get up here and see what we can do. Music's pretty decent too. The puzzles are never too hardcore, but uh, some of them had me thinking a little bit. And if you don't want to think, just beat up walls. Best feature. Excellent. All right. Oh, and the the developer of this game, uh, or the founder of Animu Games, the developer of this, uh, had an interview with Siliconera, and I'll link that in the description. You can read that. And I'm definitely hoping to see more of their stuff. I love stupid little things like getting into the level geometry like that. Ha! <laughs> it's just so satisfying to be able to break stuff. Like I can't believe there's not more destructible environments after Red Faction Guerrilla showed that. Like, wow, it's awesome. It's such a good game. And I really like the character design. This is one of the few times where the eight-way movement is actually kind of a big pain. Um, I find it slightly difficult to land properly on those with a joystick and eight-way movement. Oh, the other issue with controllers is um, 
If you have a 360 pad, uh, you're probably familiar with the stupid stick not resetting perfectly. Um, somewhat rarely, but still noticeably, I would have it get stuck in a position that the game would still read and move. Like, read as if I were trying to move. And so that was a little annoying. I'm using a DS4 and it hasn't been a problem since. But, uh... Just know that the keyboard controls work perfectly fine if you do have issues. There's lots of little shortcuts that let you go back like to a later point quicker. I really like that about this game. It's it lets you solve puzzles. Ooh. Speaking of puzzles. Looks like we can get across to there if we use these. And as you can see there, this little shortcut that we activated some time ago uh, actually lets us easily go back to this puzzle and then continue on our way. The levels are actually very well designed, and so falling off or something is never really too big of a time waste. I'm not sure what happens when you die, as I was, I was trying to say that earlier. I... It hasn't happened. I think it was actually this very level I almost died before. I'm not sure if you just have to start the whole thing over again. I would kind of assume so. Or if it just boots you to a checkpoint or something. It shouldn't... Death isn't really a big deal as long as you aren't completely stupid like I am. And there we have 100, so we need to just end the level. And the counter, the crystal counter sh serves as a good way to show progress. There's 25 from enemies and 75 from the little statues. So you need to beat up, you know, once you have 30 or 25 crystals not from statues, you're done fighting enemies. And see, there's shortcuts all over. I really like that. So levels aren't too huge, but they're fairly intricate. There we go. Top of the world, ma! I love being able to do stupid stuff like this. Like, there's no reason to be up here. But you can, and it's fun, so I do. Oh, I want to break that archway. Oh well. Wee. See, there's that... That dialogue from before is stuck there. The game does feel a teeny bit low budget because of stuff like that, but it works really well based on, you know, what's in it. it the game, I forgot to mention. The game's eight bucks on Steam. It's currently 10% off for launch. I like how the environments change. The grass here, they need a darker texture for these grass things. Well, I'll play a little in this level because it shows how the mechanics really get mixed up. Like, in a good way. The game changed a lot more than I was initially expecting. So, game's only 8 bucks, it's a few hours. There's a few more enemy types too, like that archer we just saw. And so, the game looks a teeny bit low budget, but they really make it work with what they've got. And it's a Unity game, by the way. The witch of the legend is an evil, wicked person. The 
But I really love this sort of cheap, good experience, you know, not destroying anyone's bank account on either side. And it doesn't overstay its welcome. It doesn't have, you know, collect the fun BS. It's just a good little game, and at least in my opinion, it fully justifies its price. And I really hope there's a space on PC and stuff for games like this. Not sure it'll be topping Steam charts, but uh, I really hope little games like this, you know, can survive and do so. Like, and like I said, like I said, it's Unity, so it's pretty easy to get started in Unity and make stuff. Oh goodness. Okay. See the little the flowy mist stuff pushes you around. If you weren't noticing that. So I think that's all connected. Yep. Yeah, I really like what they've got here. They they've got quite a variety of mechanics going going on, and they do some good puzzles. The puzzles, of course, get harder as you go on. The story isn't too complex, but it's a fun little storybook sort of thing. The Aurora looks a little weird because, you know, it's a 2D texture really, but uh, I really like the Aurora look. Whoa! That's not supposed to happen. Alright. Oops. Sorry, princess. So we're upside down. That's that's fine. Nothing wrong with being upside down. Wait. There we go. Alright. Okay, let's not fall up. It's probably not good. It, where do I go now? Here. Okay. Wee. The skeletons. They were once people who lived here. Then why are they attacking humans? Is it the witch controlling them? Witch. These skeletons are all carrying crystals. Are they gathering them for you? No. The skeletons. They're not gathering. The witch is all nice to us, I'm sure that's not suspicious at all. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oops. See, I really like that attack, it's just a little fussy. Also, it does always lunge you forward, so it's a little dangerous to do if, you know, you might fall off an edge or something. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> they will take falling damage and, like, die if you knock them off a platform. Usually not too easy to knock them off a platform. Whee! Nothing suspicious going on there. It's totally fine. Oops. Oh, and there's a camera center button. Don't press it. <laughs> it's really disorienting. I guess if you want to play without manually adjusting the camera, I don't know why you would want to do that.
Now, the controls are very simple. Uh, you haven't really missed any of the controls. Like, there's two kinds of attacks. There's jump. There's the back dash. There's the center camera button. We're just about done here. Oh, hello. There we are. You don't break? How dare you. Wee. The movement with the rings feels a teeny bit fussy. Like, it's not automatic, like Sonic, the Sonic things that do that. Oh crap, I forgot a thing. Goodness. Well. Hmm. That's about enough for a first look. Let's uh a quick look, whatever you want to call things. I don't I don't even know what to call stuff anymore. So this is Forward to the Sky. It's on Steam right now. You can play with keyboard or mouse. Eight bucks. Um I will say it does get a bit more complicated, a little... There's some more puzzles, and there's fun mechanics and new stuff in every level, and in my opinion it ends in a satisfactory way, it never overstays its welcome. I really like it, and, and uh, look forward to new stuff by the developer.